Let's see. I heard you knocked out some of the tossball stick. The guy insulted my Rizzo's Rangers, all right? You can't just insult my Rangers and expect to get away with it. Really? Seriously? So, of course, I decked him with a tossball stick. I mean, what am I? Some kind of fair weather fan? You are someone that probably takes your sports a little too seriously. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Outer Worlds. I'm an old guy gaming, and we're going to go ahead and start the next part of the main quest line. Um, I just did a little bit of uh, stuff offline. Basically, what I did was I installed um, the the armor mod on here, so it raised this up three more points. And we gave uh, Vicar Max our stealth armor. And uh, we should actually probably give him a better weapon too. Oh, the other thing that I did with him is I gave him a perk, a sneaky perk that basically reduces his threat by 30%, which will hopefully most of the time keep the mobs away from him so he doesn't die like our other companion died, which really sucked. So that's what we've done for him. Um, but now I'm looking at it, I'm thinking... Uh, I'm thinking I want to give him... Uh, let's see... Let's give him the shock stick and let's give him this assault rifle because those are pretty badass weapons. Unless we want to give him the light machine gun. Because this, this is kind of my weapon, you know? But I've got the other ones. Yeah, we'll let him, we'll let him use that, I guess. Uh, there was one other thing I want to do too. I want to make sure that his distance... Is, well, medium's good. Let's keep him ranged. And let's just keep him defensive so he won't attack unless he is attacked and we just have to do this because you know we we don't want him to die we don't want to lose another companion that really sucked when we lost uh parvati uh all right but this does if he does get attacked this gives him a chance to actually defend himself okay i think that's good all right guys let's go ahead and get started here uh we're gonna hit the the navigation terminal. Oh, wow, this is cool. Check this out. So we need to go to... We're here at Terra 2. Phineas said we could go to his lab if we ever wanted to talk to him. And the, uh, the Groundbreaker... Oh, that's like a big-ass ship, isn't it? Okay. I thought the Groundbreaker would was like a colony or something. The fastest. The fastest, I think is how you pronounce that. Olympus... Monarch. They said something about Monarch uh, in something that we read. Tartarus, Scylla, Typhon, and Arandos. Okay. Um, so, let's go to the Groundbreaker. Groundbreaker docking bays. Here we go. This kind of reminds me just a little bit of the Mass Destiny. Effect menu. Alright, welcome to the system map. Here you can see all the planets in the system as well as some special points of interest that you may have discovered. You can fly your ship to any location that you have unlocked, though some landing bays require special codes and keys before they allow you to land there. Moving between planets is considered extremely dangerous, and all employees are encouraged to remain home or at work. Right, okay. We've reached the groundbreaker. We've reached the groundbreaker. Oh, there it is. All right, how do we get over to it? Do we have, like, an EVA suit? Look at that thing, man. That thing's huge. All right, let's talk to Ada. Welcome back, Captain. Thank you. How can I be of assistance? I'm in the mood for some entertainment. I am? Got a minute to talk? I'd like to learn more about the colony. Uh, yeah, let's learn what more about the colony. the colony would you like to discuss? The Groundbreaker. Terra 2 Monarch. Yeah, let's uh, let's just go right down the list. Ah, uh, yes. As Dr. Wells is a wanted outlaw, he built his laboratory into an asteroid. Orbital destinations can be challenging to land on. His more so than most. What do you know about Phineas? There is a bounty on his head. One with a markedly high reward amount. Shall I engage the laser weapon <laughs> system? No, no. Uh... Don't do that. A sensible choice, as we do not have any laser weapons. Well, why'd you tell me we did? 
All right, uh, why'd you say the landing might be rough? The outlaw scientist known as Dr. Phineas B. Wells has taken a measure of precautions to make the lab undetectable to those hunting him. Even knowing the location, my systems resist my orders to go where I instruct them. My systems resist my orders to go where I instruct them. What? What the hell does that even mean? My systems resist my orders to go where I instruct them. Okay, so ba basically what she's saying is that he probably like scrambles the nav system so it doesn't doesn't quite know where to go or something to that effect. I'm that's what I in I'm interpreting from that. Uh, I want to ask about somewhere else. Let's talk about something else. Mm. How can I be of assistance? I'd like to learn more about the colony. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Okay. Let's go back to the orbital lab oh, for a yes. second, because I don't know if we finished all this. All right, so why is that? The outlaw scientist known as Dr. Phineas B. Wells. Wait, didn't we already go through that? The location. My sister. Of course. What part of the colony? Ah, uh, yes. All right, I of guess course. that I guess that's what all we can ask colony? her about Phineas. All right, uh, tell us about Terra Two, where we just were. Where in Terra Two? Oh, um, Emerald Vale and Edgewater. Edgewater is the sparkling county seat of Emerald Vale, or it was when first built. Since then, neglect and time have worn away her shiny veneer. The town is near the coordinates where Captain Hawthorne died. It would not be unfortunate if something, like, say, a plague, were to wipe Emerald Vale from the face of the planet. It would not be unfortunate? You don't like the place, do you? Oh, maybe because I see Captain CJ Hawthorne died. in the channel. Welcome, CJ. Um, how Good is see you, man. How is Eswater faring since we left it? No, what do you think of the townspeople? You mean the ones who did not answer my distress call with medical assistance, but instead came to issue my injured captain a parking ticket? Yeah, those people. <laughs> I'm sure they are wonderful humans who don't deserve to be wiped out by starvation or a devastating plague. Uh, what's going on, CJ? Welcome to the stream, man. Good to see you. Um, how is Edgewater faring since we left it? Since you diverted power to the deserters, the botanical lab is thriving. However, Emerald Vale's cannery shut down leading to a total collapse of Edgewater's population. Thank you, Captain. She's... <laughs> look at the look on her face. She's, like, really happy because she's, like... She's, like, got it in for the for the townsfolk. It's not really the townsfolk's fault, though. It's a stupid Thompson dickweed. Well, and even... You know, even beyond him, it's, like, Spacer's Choice and the board. But, you know, it all goes uphill, right? All right. Um, I want to ask about somewhere else. Of course. What? Uh, the Groundbreaker. We're clear to dock with the Groundbreaker, if that's your desired destination. It is. If we're going there, please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardettes take their docking laws quite seriously. Um, you can take care of that for us, right? <laughs> um, well, okay, give me the spiel on the Groundbreaker. The Groundbreaker was Halcyon's original colony ship. Oh, okay. It has since been repurposed as a service station in the Lagrange point of the system. Freighters often deliver or pick up goods from the Groundbreaker en route to other destinations. The city ship it's a hosts city an ship. array of cargo bays, factories, housing sections, and more. Many of Halcyon's companies maintain office spaces with stationed representatives in what is considered a truly neutral territory within the system. If we're going there, Please be sure all docking forms have been filed in... Yeah, you've already said that. Um, you can take care of that for us, right? I can, yes. Let me add that to my list of 1,435,498 <laughs> tasks I am simultaneously executing in order to run our ship. I love this. What a smart-ass computer. I love her so much. Um, oh, and do it without the lip. Nah, I like the lip. The lip is awesome. You are more than welcome, Captain. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's ask about somewhere else. Of course. What part of the colony <laughs> would you like to discuss? This is funny, you guys. Uh, okay, Monarch. Where in Monarch? Um, Stellar Bay. Ah, uh, Monarch, the armpit of the Halcyon system. Oh, great. Her last Armpit. functioning port town is Stellar Bay, 
Well, that is if you don't count Sublight's Smuggler's Port at Fallbrook. Smuggler's Port? It's Sublight run for the purpose of shipping contraband. And before you ask, I don't know the coordinates, so I can't talk us there. Are you sure you don't know the coordinates? Uh, why is Monarch being blockaded? I believe it has something to do with the planet being an uninhabitable wilderness and a lawless land with no corporate presence. You may wish to survey the residents in Stellar Bay for additional data points. Hmm, okay. Um, let's ask of about course. somewhere else. What part of the colony? Monarch? Where in Monarch? Cascadia. Warning. All colonists are urged to reconsider travel to Cascadia due to infestation of mantasaurs and risk of indefinite <laughs> detention or death. Look at her face. <laughs> I love it. It's funny. Um, infestation of mantasaurs. What the hell's a mantasaur? Any people? Uh, what's a log report? Sounds dangerous. Yeah, it sounds dangerous. This is one of those times where you say one word but really mean another, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose you would find an environment like this fun. Well, maybe. Uh, any people live in Cascadia aside from marauders? There are no people aside from marauders in Cascadia. There is only death. Wow, okay. Uh, what's the local the report? The local report is that you will very likely die if you leave Cascadia's landing pad. <laughs> Sounds like a nasty place. Uh, all right. Uh, of course. What part of the... Have we covered everything now? Um... I think we have. Let's talk about something else. Be of assistance? Got a minute to talk? I have lots of minutes. Many minutes. Unlimited minutes, perhaps. Providing an adequate power source, I can function indefinitely. <laughs> uh, what if you don't have a power source? I prefer to think of it as being in a state of slumber. Perhaps for an indefinite duration of time. Do you think that is what it's like for the colonists on A Lost Hope? Mm, yeah, I guess so. When I simulate myself in such a scenario, I do not find it to be desirable. I think my self-preservation protocols incline me to desire the alternative. Sounds reasonable. And what might that be? Traveling the system with you, Captain. Aw, Ada. That's nice. What about your last captain? Do you miss him? Or is one captain the same as another? Do you know what it feels like when the ship undergoes an unexpected power surge? Not particularly. A jolt to the system. I have felt that. I do feel Aw, that. she's sad now. As you may be aware... Captain Alex Hawthorne was a smuggler of some repute. I failed to predict the likely outcome of his reckless behavioral patterns. I should have predicted that. In our travels together, Alex liked to pass time by, as he called it, tinkering to improve my design. Hmm. Have there been other captains of this ship? Both. We both know I'm not Alex Hawthorne, right? Let's talk about something else. Um, yeah, you know what, let's, let's, let's do this. We both know that I'm not really Alex Hawthorne, right? Oh, I know you are not the same Captain Alex Hawthorne who died in Emerald Vale due to excessive internal and external bleeding. Pretty much, yeah. I have required you to assume Hawthorne's identity in order to sync your commands to my interpretation protocols. Hmm. I've since registered you as the captain of the Unreliable. You're welcome to continue lying about your identity <laughs> if you wish. But I know the truth. Um, you're a very strange computer, but I like you. <laughs> That's the, that is the God's honest truth. I love her. Uh, have there been other captains of the ship? No, let's tell her this first. I am relieved to hear it, Captain. Look at her face. The fun, the funnest thing about this is just watching the facial expressions when you have this chat with her. Um, really? No, but I am programmed to put you at ease <laughs> by saying so. <laughs> Okay, have there been other captains on the if ship? If you mean, was Captain Hawthorne my first? Yes, he was. Okay, uh, let's talk about something How else. How can I be of a... Um... I'm in the mood for some entertainment. Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? Uh, tell me a joke. I wish I was your second derivative, so I could investigate your concavities. What? <laughs> Okay, uh, play, play my favorite song. Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's Choice. No. Can we get some Metallica instead? 
everyone in Halcyon is contractually obligated to label this or another board certified jingle their favorite. I song. see, okay. Oh, uh, all right. As Aiden. you wish, Captain. I must comply with all direct orders. Um, I'll talk to you later. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, that was fun. That was fun. All right, so how do we. How do we dock? Are you free to talk? Uh, sure, Vicar. As always, I am at your disposal. <clears throat> Anything you'd like to discuss? Um. What's your story? Well, he kind of already told us a little bit about his story. Tell me about the book we picked up in French. Remind me, what are your thoughts on, on the philosophers? Any days where I can find someone who speaks French in this colony? Vicar, you're out of my crew. I want you off the ship. No, hell, we're not going to say that to him. Um. You know what? Let, let's talk to him later. Well, does he want to talk to us, though? Now, let's talk to him later. We spent a bunch of time talking to the computer. We need to get some action going here. So we'll talk to him later. Okay. Transition to Groundbreaker docking base. Okay. Oh, you know what? Uh, let's, let's take just a little snooze here. It is awesome, man. That's so funny. Okay, uh, we need to eat. So let's eat this. And let's eat... One of those. And then we need something to drink. Where's our water pills? Here we go. Oh, my goodness. We need more water pills. We're having more apple juice, do we? Oh, we can eat the energy brew. Or drink it, rather. Okay. Holy crap, man. Does that not give us, uh... Hydration? Moderately caffeinated... Moderately priced caffeine drink. Mind after use plus one. Last 30 seconds. There we go. Okay. That took a while. Okay, we'll do a quick save. Okay. All right, here we go. On to the Groundbreaker. So, select up to two companions. Oh, we can have two companions. Nice. Okay. Yeah, we'll select um, him because you know what? He's the only one we got right now. We're going to have to try and keep him from getting killed, too. <clears throat> Check this place out. All it right. Smells like grease and unwashed bodies. Just as I remembered. Oh, you've been here before? Captain, if I could trouble you for a moment of your time, while we're on the groundbreaker, I may have an idea for how we could find a translator. You know somebody who can read the book? I've been thinking on that. There's a former associate. Uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra 2 some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. That sounds like a good lead, but how do we find him? That seems like a bit of a long shot. What makes you so sure? Seriously, only one guy in this whole colony that can translate French? A former what now? Yeah, I'm curious about that. You caught me. <laughs> Listen. The OSI <clears throat> frowns on fraternization with philosophists. I'd like to keep my associations with our scholar friend quiet. All right, I'm down with that. That sounds like a good lead. Seriously, the only guy in the whole colony who can translate French? Um, you would think that there would be more people that could translate French here, huh? The only one I'm aware of. I suppose we could always just ask random passers-by if they are fluent in it. We could. Um, <laughs> your, your sarcasm is duly noted and will be reflected on review. No, um, all right, that's point taken. I, I like this guy. Fortunately, we're in the perfect place to start. This is where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. Okay. How will a crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? How is it that a simple vicar happens to be such a highly skilled... You know, that's a damn good question. 
Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitential. Ah, clock. okay. You learned it in prison. <laughs> I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard toss ball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. You're a smart dude. All right. Um, how will a crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? I'll comb <clears throat> the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. All right. That sounds reasonable. All right. Sounds good. Let's go. Thank you, Captain. Okay. So... Can we jump off of here? Nope. <laughs> I had to I had to find out. I had to find out. Oh shit, that's stealing. Um anybody looking? Jane Elson. Okay. Shh, don't tell anybody. Let's talk to Jane here. Just checking your ship's manifest. Standard procedure. Welcome to Groundbreaker, by the by. Well, you're welcome Don't there, the bubbly lady. Got a few days before it reaches critical. I'm sure Miss Chief Tennyson will get it sorted before then. Oh, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good at all. Wow, look at this thing, man. It's huge. Cool. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <clears throat> That's not the point. This hat would just knock out one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get cute with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. I need a drink. Wait, that's Marnette. Don't we have to talk to her about something? Just arrived. Head over to customs. Wheeler needs to process you. Uh, okay. Let's talk to Felix. Going for a <clears throat> stroll around the docking base? I noticed you were in the middle of an argument earlier. Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. Okay. Um... Let's see, I heard you knocked out some of the toss ball stick. The guy insulted my Rizzo's rangers, all right? You can't just insult my rangers and expect to get away with it. Really? Seriously? So, of course, I decked him with a toss ball stick. I mean, what am I? Some kind of fair weather fan? You are someone that probably takes your sports a little too seriously. Uh, okay, slow down. Exactly what did you do? Guy never liked me. Always <clears throat> trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. He's a spacer's chosen man, though. So when the chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. And that's when you resolved your differences like an adult, right? <laughs> that's when I broadsided him with a toss ball oh, stick. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Okay, um... Sounds like you're better off on your own. You're just lucky you're not serving... Well, exactly. You know something? I am lucky. I ought to raise a glass of zero-G to my fortune. If I had the bits. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? Maybe. That's me, Captain of the Unreliable. Technically, the previous captain died in a horrible accident. Why do you ask? Yeah, why do you ask? Oh, just musing is all. Must be nice having the run of the colony. Never being anchored to one place, always chasing some <coughs> horizon. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off, guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. Um, you in a hurry to get somewhere? Oh, uh, not at all. Just, uh, you know, gonna figure out what to do next. I don't think you have any plans, dude. See you around, boss. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Hmm. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Okay. I wonder if um, we would have had a chance to hire him, but 
going for a stroll. Well, maybe we blew it by not asking him. That's okay, though. We move cargo 16 hours a day, and half of us still can't afford a bed. Oh, that sucks. Okay. I don't know if I would want that guy for a follower anyways. He was a little... I don't know. Not super smart, I guess. Steel, steel zero G brew. Yeah, I don't think it'd be a wise thing for us to steal stuff around here. Unless we can go in here and close the door so no one can see. <laughs> then we can steal stuff. Ooh, a jeweled ring. It's dark back here. Vicar, don't open the door, man. We gotta steal stuff without them watching. There we go. Whoa. That was close. <laughs> um, all right, so we need to go... What do we need to do? We need to go check in. Really? This is the way you go? That's kind of weird. Look at Vicar. Climb the ladder, man. He's good at that. Oh, I guess we have to go that way. Okay. Ow! <laughs> That hurt. Customs and inspection, right this way. Identification, please. Present Hawthorne's ID. My name's OG. It's my first time here. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, I don't have an ID. What happens then? <laughs> we better give him Hawthorne's ID. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize uh -oh. in advance. I'm about to ruin your uh -oh, day. Uh-oh, uh-oh. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. That doesn't sound good. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. Um, I take it back. I'm not Hawthorne. That isn't my ship. <laughs> Let's just see what he does when I choose that option. Oh, thank the law. I could use a diversion. Tell me more, then. Really sell it to me. <laughs> This is awesome. Catherine Hawthorne abducted me and made me work his ship for uh, his ship for free. I'm a prisoner of help. I went to ship at a poker game. Hawthorne gave me his ID so I could fly it. Hawthorne died in a crash. I took his ID so I could fly his ship. Let's tell him the truth. Not fond of that story. It lacks dazzle. What else have you got? <laughs> well, the truth. Um, I'm just borrowing it. I was hoping for something a little more thrilling. You sure you didn't duel him to the death ward? Steal it from his berth while he slept nearby? That's no fun. All right, so how do I get this resolved? You'll want to take it up with Udom Bedford, our board representative here on He Ground sounds Raider. like a piece of work. His office is located along the starboard wall of the promenade. Shines like a Byzantium commode. <laughs> you can't miss it. Any idea why my ship was impounded? Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. <laughs> okay, gotcha. I shouldn't be mentioning it. But what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you must have riled up someone important. Um, I'm going to wring this Bedford guy's neck. You take the starch out of him, well, you won't hear any complaints from me. I kind of oh, like this guy. That way, would you mind doing me a favor? What's that? Um, what? Sure. Wanda Dorset over in sick bay. Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. <laughs> okay, I'll tell Wanda. Her shipment? A handful of Sam cleaning units retrofitted <clears throat> for surgery. I don't know much else. I stopped listening when she started yelling. Got it. Much appreciated. Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, I'm looking for someone named Gladys. Can I find a job right here? What can you tell me about Udom? Seems like there's some tension between the board and Groundbreaker. Uh, I don't know. Should I be asking him about her, though? Because she's like a black market person. Let's ask him. The fence. You'll find her in the rest of oh, the go. Okay. On your left when you enter the promenade. He doesn't seem Make to mind. Make sure you bring an empty belly. Um, 
I'm looking for a drink. Any recommendations? Can I find a job around here? What can you tell me about Udom? He's friendly enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. Okay, sounds like a fun guy. So there's tension between Groundbreaker and the board? They can't abide an independent township, especially not one they got to depend on. We're the first and last stop out of this colony. All their interstellar freighters come through us, and we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. There you go. Folks around here Serves are right. flustered that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out-system shipments anytime we like, and that terrifies them. Okay. Yeah, your station's in a state of disrepair. You could make the board fix it. Why can't Groundbreaker and the board just work together? I'm glad it terrifies them, the bastards. Keep pushing them. Uh, let's go with number one. You mean the heat? Sure, we could make them fix it. But what would they do in retaliation? They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard? Maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. Or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board is necessary to provide order to the colony. They believe it's their prerogative to overrun you. But whether you allow that is up to you. It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right. So far, anyway. Hmm, okay. The board runs most of the system, don't they? Yep. Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing bays. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. Hmm. Okay, thanks for the info. Sure thing. Um, can I find a job around here? Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board. That is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. Um, how does Halcyon Holdings work anyway? I didn't think there were many independent operators in the system. What do you know about Sublight Salvage? Um, I'm looking for something a little more local. Commandant Sanita might have a couple of folks she needs killed. Bad folks, I mean. <laughs> not, uh, not regular folks. Okay, bounty hunting's good. the security desk behind me. Chief Jun Lei might have an errand needs running. She's all tied up trying to fix our heat problem. You'll find her in engineering. How about something long-term? If you're thinking to make a career here, don't waste your time. Full-time jobs on Groundbreaker tend to be inherited or go to a fellow crew member's kid. Keep it in the family, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Sucks, but it makes sense. All right, uh, what do you know? I didn't think there were many independent operators in the system. Relative to the board holdings? Not really. <laughs> but there's a few with the means to go where they will. They aren't rich, but they aren't likely to look too close at your work history either. How does Halcyon Holdings work, anyway? <clears throat> Are you pulling my leg? Um, I just want to hear your take on it. It goes like this. Back on Earth, before the crossing, the powers that be were selling off stakes in distant star systems they thought had potential. A bunch of companies decided to throw in together and form the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, then buy up the rights to this here colony. That groups what we now call the board. The board runs most of the system. Don't we already ask that? How does Groundbreaker fit into that? So there's actually a boardroom somewhere with all these company heads in it? Sitting around drinking whiskey and smoking cigars? Yeah, probably. Can't say for sure, of course. Doubt I'll ever see the inside of it myself. Um, how does the Groundbreaker fit into that? Groundbreaker was one of the original colony vessels to come over on the crossing, a few years before her sister ship, the Hope. <clears throat> Once everybody'd been dethawed and dropped dirt side, the original crew of the Groundbreaker decided they rather liked the spacefaring life. I guess that was the start of our independent spirit. Now, here we are. Interesting. Okay. Uh, the board runs most of the system, don't they? Yep. Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's Yeah, we already asked that question. Like every... Wonder why it had us ask it again. Glad to help. What do you know about sublight salvage? They strip the parts from derelict ships and abandoned outposts. There's some that say they make the derelicts and encourage folks to abandon their steads. Hmm. Sublight gives me the creeps. I've known folks who went to work for them and just vanished. They're on the promenade run by a woman named Lilia Hagen. I'm only telling you so you know to avoid them. All right. Okay. 
Um, I'm looking for a drink. Any recommendations? Most places are on the promenade deck. Big door yonder, straight through security. There's a bar on the starboard side. I got a preference for the Lost Hope myself. Talk to Vera. She'll set you right. That must be a drink. Okay, got it. You need anything else? You let me know. Don't want anyone saying Groundbreaker's not the most hospitable port in the colony. All right, see you around. Be seeing you. Corporal Leonard Wheeler. He's not a bad guy, even though he's confiscating our ship. All right, well, um, so let's see. That, that was a lot of information. My head's kind of exploding right now. Let's take a look and see what we got. So, uh, weapons from the void. So that's the science thing. Solution, talk to Dr. Wanda Dorset in the sick bay. Okay, so that was the quest for him, you know, the corporal that he wanted us to do for him. This is our companion's quest. Located security terminal. And then the main quest, so we got to go speak to Gladys, and we got to talk to this Udom dude because he's impounded our ship now. All right, so that's what we have on the docket, you guys. But we're out of time, unfortunately. So we're going to wrap up this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video. I appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.